a novice's handicap hurdle for Nicky Richards and Dougie Costello. A horse who had shown a little bit last time has shown a lot more today. Wins at 8-1. to one. Multiple Group 1 winner, Canford Cliffs. Canford Cliffs again, Richard Hughes, consummate. The two-time Royal Ascot winner, Strong Suit. This was over in a matter of strides, and Strong Suit back in the winner's enclosure. The group winning two-year-old, Chandlery. Chandlery is going to win the Vertlico Vintage Stakes. Just three examples of top-class DBS yearlings. Find the next generation. DBS Premier Yielding Sales. It's in our blood. The Skybet Mobile Convivial Maiden is next up at York. It's over seven furlongs and we've got a field of 17 runners. Crying Wolf for the Godolphin team. Frankie de Tour running for Mahmoud Al Zaruni is the 11 to 2 favourite. 13 to 2 Burano. Lenarman Ladd is 7 to 1 for Barry Hills. 8 to 1 Athens. That's from 12s. 8 to 1 also Thomas Chippendale. At 10 to 1 Firestarter. 12s Barburton. At 14s Miswaj. 14s as well Storming Bernard. 16 to 1 Premier Choice. Bit of support for that. And Rugged Cross Strictly Silver. 20s Bar. First thing to say about this collection of maidens is it's a really good-looking field. You, you'd expect it, given the, the breeding and the stables involved, but it's a, it's a strong-looking field. We'll start with Crying Wolf, who's a, a newcomer by Street Cry in the Mark Mood al Zaruni Godolphin stable. Frankie de Tory riding. What did you make of him on looks and pedigree? Yeah, on pedigree, a uh, very good pedigree. Called by Street Cry, cost $800,000 US dollars as a yearling last season. Plenty of winners in his pedigree. Good-looking horse as well. Stable and had a good season with the two-year-olds. 14 juvenile winners already this season but 11 to 2 the field really tells you no really strong words for anything it looks a really open contest but a fascinating one he's wearing the sheepskin noseband an attractive horse this uh, street cry at Colt move on to Burano who's having his third start for Brian Meehan and Martin Dwyer is riding him uh, one of the, the most experienced in the field he's had two handlers in the paddock nonetheless but he's quite a good walker he seems to use himself well in his slower places and he was swishing his tail as well beforehand but he, he's the one with the experience he's had the two runs decent level of form as well chased home Rock and Ante at uh, Newmarket first time out fourth next time at, again at Newmarket over seven phones and that race was won by the Acorn winner and back in third was Fencing who was a good winner at Newbury at the weekend so the form Look strong. Yes, Entifada, who won that race, uh, won the Acom on the first day of this meeting. And this horse has got entries in the Champagne Stakes Group 2 and the Dewhurst Group 3, Group 1, both over seven furlongs. So that is Burano. Um, if we move now to uh, number nine, who is Clenarm and Ladd, uh, Barry Hills and Michael Hills teaming up. This horse has had the one run, second to Moustache, on his debut, an encouraging run. Very encouraging run, finished second, um, just missed out narrowly to the more experienced Moustache, was only beating the nose. That was over six films. He's up to seven, which I think will suit him, even though he's by red clubs. He's got the experience, good ground on debut, uh, good pedigree as well, provided he builds on that, he should be there or thereabouts. Charlie Hills, assistant trainer and successor to Barry, will be hoping for this horse can make an impact for him so he's got a, a star horse to take him into uh, next year but it was certainly a good start to his career when he was second behind Moustache if we move to number 17 that is Sir Henry Cecil's newcomer Thomas Chippendale in the colours of Sir Robert Ogden who is here Tom Queeley taking the ride this horse has shown signs in the paddock Mark that he might be a little bit inexperienced in the race yeah I'd agree with that he, he, he did look fit but he did look inexperienced he was, he was on edge of a good 10 minutes before the, before the jockeys came out and he was the last horse to be mounted as well. So definite signs of inexperience. Good pedigree, though. Cost 375000 Colt by Dan Silly, out of all for loving. And he's got the big race entries. He's in the Royal Lodge, he's in the Racing Post Trophy, and he's also in next year's Derby. I'm sure he will improve whatever he shows today. We'll show you the betting on the screen. 
Apparently we have joint favourites. Yes, we do. Crying Wolf and Clonarmon lad at six to one. Let's move on to the uh, Coolmore duo. Start with Athens. They're both good-looking horses, actually. Athens is a is a strong-looking horse by Dylan Thomas. Like them both, yeah. Athens in particular, good pedigree, called by Dylan Thomas from the family of Machiavellian and Exit to Nowhere. Um, Ed O'Brien, a couple of juvenile winners so far in in the UK this season. He looks a really nice-looking horse. And Crusade, who's also making his debut, uh, good pedigree. He's called by Mr. Greel. He's got the big race entries: Mill Reef, Champagne, Dewhurst, Middle Park, and National Stakes. As you would expect from a, a couple of uh, Bally Doyle entrants. Any others that you liked that particularly took your eye paddock? The one I really liked, probably more for next year, was Premier Choice of Tim Eastby, a big strapping sort of horse. He possibly won't be good enough for this, but he improved from his first run to his second at Red Car. That form probably isn't good enough, but I think he'll make a cracking three-year-old next year. And the newcomer I liked was Strictly Silver, the the Dalakani Gray for Alan Bailey and Cathy Gannon. I really like the way he used himself, a really nice walker. That's interesting because there's money for him this morning. He's got some good entries as well. He's in the Champagne, he's in the Racing Post Trophy. Colt by Dalakani, 40,000 uh, first run of, of his career, trained by Alan Bailey. So uh, the money this morning could be significant. Barberton was quite nice as well, but he became slightly edgy as proceedings went on in the paddock. It's the convivial now. Let's join Stuart. And Premier Choice about to be put into stall 10. I think we're just about set for the Skybet Mobile Convivial Maiden Stakes. And they're off and racing over seven furlongs. These two-year-olds came away to a pretty good line. Crusade towards the inner was one of the slowest. Right down at the fence, Mitch Rapp in a white jacket away well. Alongside storming Bernard, rugged cross. Crying Wolf from a wide draw has had to be dropped in by Dottori. Nose banded and has only got uh, shotly music behind as they go towards the end of a couple of furlongs. It's storming Bernard who leads from rugged cross and premier choice, the hoop colours. Thomas Chippendale with a pink cap is tracking the leaders from Mitch Rapp and then the diamond jacket of Flanam and Ladd. Barberton is racing in midfield ahead of Mizwaj, who's away to the left. Uh, then Athens with the stripes on the cap upside crusade in mid-division. Working back to Firestarter, Imperial Order, Dark Don. Burano pretty well back with Strictly Silver. Crying Wolf right out in the centre of the course. Dottori sitting lower in the saddle is still in rear. Shortly Music is tailed off. Down towards the final two and a half furlongs they come. Storming Bernard against the fence leading. Chased by Rugged Cross. Then Tlanarm and Ladd from Premier Choice. Mizwaj with a white cap improving down the centre. Then Mitch Rapp from Crusade and Athens still storming Bernard Leeds down to the last furlong and a half, rugged cross though ranging up to challenge, these two have kicked a couple of lengths clear from Ms. Wash and Lanarm and Ladd and it's rugged cross who goes to the front, under Dane O'Neill, quickens on, from the pace setting storming Bernard, Lanarm and Ladd back in third and rugged cross staying on very strongly shifts across the fence uh, but is in control and rugged cross wins the convivial main from storming Bernard Lanarm and Ladd into fourth place running on Athens, late games to Birano in to fifth, Miswash Week and Imperial Order in the midfield, and eventually Crying Wolf didn't beat anything home. Rugged Cross has won the convivial for Dan O'Neill and Henry Candy on just his second start. He's shown improvements and has won this comfortably in the end from the long time leader Storming Bernard, one of the more experienced horses in the race. That was his fourth start. Sylvester de Souza riding for Alan Bailey. Third was Clonarm and Ladd. He's run well for Michael Hills and Barry Hill staying on at the finish. And also a promising debut from Athens in fourth. Jamie Heffernan riding for Aidan O'Brien outpaced and then staying on well in the closing stages, making quite a bit of inroads in the closing stages to finish fourth. But the winner is Rugged Cross. So is taking performance, showed promise first time out at, at Newbury finishing fifth, he ran on well that day, a bit more street wise today and he's, he's, he's made, made the most of it, good draw in stall six the horses with the experience have really come to the fore with the likes of Storming Bernard who'd had the three starts, he also had an advantageous draw, he made the most of that but good performance by the winner, he's bred to be a good horse, he's a half brother to Blue Monday he's built on that initial outing and hopefully he can go on again. We take it from the stars and you see on the left hand side Crying Wolf, so there's a slow start and also given the way the race develops he's kind of in a disadvantageous place because Sylvester D'Souza has made the best use of Storming Bernard's inexperience gone over to that far side rail and instead Frankie de Torres had the slowest start on the race course debutant to find himself stuck out wide I think the draws county for plenty as has having experienced Storming Bernard who was beaten at Chester last time out he was very quickly into stride under Sylvester D'Souza the eventual winner Ruggy Cross he, he himself is in second place at, at this stage he's looked much more street wise than he was on, on debut. Mitch Rapp's prominent in Michael Buckley's colours, as is, as is um, the Tim Easterby runner, Premier Choice. And Thomas Chippendale, who looked threatening at one stage, he gets hampered but he was on the retreat at the time. He's dropped away at Termley. You've touched on the eye catcher Athens, who's fair, best of the O'Brien runners. He's run on really strongly. Definitely looked more of a three-year-old type beforehand and the ways race t today suggests uh, also.
The other Godolphin runner who's running with encouragement, Wizwaj, with the white cap, the horse that eventually finishes sixth, with a wider trip. He's shown some ability, but also signs of inexperience. He's run well considering his draw. He had a he had a wide berth to overcome coming from from stall 16, but he's, he's he's kept on well in the latter stages. Barano, another one with experience, he he stayed on well on the outside, eventually get in fifth position. But they're really taking performance by the winner. He's built on his initial outing. Uh, the same colours will be carried in the Melrose tomorrow with Ard Louis, and they'll be hopeful of a double. They would be. Um, second on the left, the grey horse, uh, Strictly Silver, has had a bit of a torrid time. Um, she, he was squeezed out on the bed, lost his footing momentarily as the horses on his outside and inside came together. He's also been bumped and barged in the straight, and in the circumstances, he's actually run quite well. Yeah, I, I did just think it's, it's been very difficult for those drawn out, uh, out wide. The first three home have come from six, four, and um, and eight, which really confirms the view. Also, the horse have been talking about they had no, no experience beforehand as well, so hopefully they will build on. On, uh, on those efforts. Yes, and Clarnham and Ladd has um, stuck on late, that's in, in third place, but uh, the winner, that's a, a lovely step forward from first to second start, Henry Cantor will be well pleased by that. Very pleased with that, yeah, carrying the Thomas Bar, colours 55,000 at the sales, ran well in a race that's begun to work out as well as well, Fahan, who was second at Newbury, he was an impressive winner in Newmarket last week, so every chance that was a strong maiden, I'm sure he'll get further than seven furlongs. his half of the Blue Monday was mile and one, mile and two sort of performer, and I'm sure those distances will be within range for him. Yes, he's from a useful family, uh, plenty of wins to his, from his half-brothers, Blue Monday notably, as Mark's just mentioned, but also Lunders Lane and B- Bazajan, um, and this is a, a good start to his career, promise on his debut, and then building on it this time around, and he hasn't really had to be that hard-ridden by Dana Neal to get his head in front, and it could be um, an interesting follow-through tomorrow with Ard Louis, the horse that looks like he will thrive over a mile and six. But Henry Candy's already got a, a nice horse for this year. No fancy entries as far as I can see. No, couldn't find. He's got a he's got a derby entry for next year, but yeah. no fancy entries for the for the two year old for the back end, but I'm sure they'll be looking to raise his sight, see what the handicapper does with him. But you'd be like to think he could go down the conditions route and see how far he could go. They might go quietly. I mean would you would you say it would be Henry Candy's sort of modus operandi to, to be sort of patient and, and go quietly? He tends to be, doesn't he? Oh, you, you'd, you'd imagine he may have one more run this season, but everything about his pedigree as well suggests he'll be a better three-year-old next year. Blue Monday was a horse who got better with age as well. Um, he's gone and won his made and see how ambitious they are this year, but I'm sure they will be next season. And there is Dana Neal receiving the congratulations of the gathered crowd. He has guided rugged cross to victory for trainer Henry Candy in the convivial, and he's beaten the field of good lookers. He's got a lovely pedigree uh, talking about him being related to Blue Monday. And uh, the grand dam is Lucine Princess, who was uh, at the dam of Warsand, Luso, Needle Gun, Cloud Castle. So it's every indication that this horse, who's by Cape Cross, may well stay, uh, and stay on and improve as he gets older. Rugged Cross, the winner, 18 to 1 of the Convivial Maiden. Second, Storming Bernard, 14 to 1, or Bernard, depending on which part of the world you're from. Lenarm and Ladd was third at 6-1. to one. Unplaced favourite, Cry and Wolf. I think he actually finished last in the end, 11-2.